have an interesting program this morning. We have the general services director and we have the resident life director. Stay with us. Good morning and welcome to Village in Motion. I'm Marcia Boyles and I'm delighted to begin this segment of Village in Motion with our General Services Director, Lynn Keefe. Good morning, Lynn, and welcome. Good morning, thank you. I think, we've, I think you've been here before and so you know, sort of know the routine. Um, what would you like to talk about this morning? Well, we're glad to see that spring is upon us. Uh, I think for the last couple months we've had a few fits and starts, but uh, if you look around the community, we continue to see uh, new flowers and trees budding, and uh, the warmer weather seems to be like it's going to stay with us. So we're thrilled. Uh, we're thrilled too. It's getting it's getting very pretty. It's about time, right? Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> so last week uh, I was on with the resident environmental committee, and they did a great great segment uh, on uh, the greening of Greenspring, if you will, uh, highlighting some of the programs that uh, we do. I gave a little bit of an overview and then they went into a lot more detail around recycling um, and some, excuse me, some of the initiatives that um, residents can do more to reduce their carbon footprint. Uh, we also were talking at the beginning about uh, one of the Earth Day uh, activities, which was the tree planting. Unfortunately, it, uh, the weather turned a little dark, but uh, that tree, if folks are interested, is out in front of Village Square. If you're facing the building, it's actually to your right, um, really on the, the edge near the driveway. Uh, that's where we had room to put a, a tree. It is a fringe tree, I believe. A so fringe tree. A fringe tree. That's one I have never heard of. Is it a flowering? I don't believe so, but uh, everybody should take a look and, and take a look. It out. And mm -hmm. Next visit, I'll know more about the fringe tree. All right, good. So uh, we continue with some of the projects that we were already working on in 2017 with windows. We have moved to neighborhood three, and uh, continuing uh, the install. We're in that regard, uh, grateful for the more mild weather. So they are picking up steam and uh, continuing to wrap up all of the uh, resident buildings here. So it'll be the end of a, a three-year project when they finish that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mentioned grounds, so everyone is yes. certainly aware uh, that our, our beloved John St. Louis, after a, a long and storied career here, uh, departed, uh, headed for retirement, we understand, uh, at a place he acquired is uh, in Indiana. Uh, for those who would really like to, you know, be able to send him a card or acknowledge him, Priscilla Lyles in administration is accepting those, so folks can take that. I know she's shipped off one batch already, mm -hmm. but uh, I've heard great stories from residents about uh, their, their friendship, how he worked with them over the years, but I just wanna assure mm -hmm. everyone uh, that one, we have his position posted, and uh, we will, big shoes to fill, but we will fill them indeed. Uh, Lynn, let me ask you, um, for those of us that have patios and mm -hmm. need some things immediately, who do we call now? So you still call General Services. They mm -hmm. will create a work order. Dave is, is still here, and we're getting him some additional assistance. Uh, maintenance is adding to and assisting as they can to free him up to do uh, the things that are specific to you know, the gardening, things that he's most familiar with. So rest assured, uh, all of that work will get done. Uh, the position that we have open will, you know, their role will continue to oversee the vendor uh, who manages, uh, you know, we need a big team to do that for yes. 80 acres. Mm -hmm. So, um, but continue to call general services. Well, for things like, I need a bag of soil. Mm -hmm. um, we don't, we never went through general services on that. We just called John. So in the meantime, who would we call? Would we well, call Dave? I, yes, but it may be more efficient for you to call general services because you it know, with one less a person. For a bag no, of but soap. they can document and get the information to uh, okay. to Dave. Right. So that way, right. um, 
it's not sitting on somebody's voicemail or message machine. Right. So, right. thank you. Sure. Uh, so, T coil or the uh, listening assistance is going to be installed in the theater and the Akatink room. Uh, mm -hmm. We're working to try and get it off hours. Amazingly, those rooms are used weekends, weekdays. I know. Uh, so, we are trying to not bump into those programs, uh, uh, but the project manager is working around. So, some folks may be asked to flex a little bit. We need two days in each space uh, to get that installed. But uh, now, explain what that is. So, the T coil is a term that it's a, a type of technology that uh, many people have in their hearing aid. Now they may or may not realize that that's mm -hmm. in there, um, but it enhances the hearing and actually blocks out a lot of the extraneous noise. Mm -hmm. So you may notice if you go to large venues, say the Kennedy Center, uh, they if you read in the fine print, they will indicate that they have that system in place. So if you have your T-coil activated on your hearing aid, um, it will enhance your experience there. So ah. that's what it will do here. This is a, a pilot of sorts. Um, it will also work with some of the um, pocket talkers, I think is what folks have called them, the portable uh, devices where it has a, um, an earpiece and it's connected with a wire and looks like a little transistor radio. Mm -hmm. So we have those as well to enhance if you're, you know, don't regularly wear a hearing aid. So. Um, that's excellent. Project management mm -hmm. is working with uh, Marie Lee mm -hmm. and her group, and so once that's installed, I'm sure they will have a, a rollout and some education and uh, really highlight that. Mm -hmm. Good. So, uh, at Coffee with the Exec Team last week, I mentioned the hallway life cycle, which is uh, occurring right now in Neighborhood One in Parkview. Uh, we have four hallways there, and they are wrapping up or finishing work on the fourth hallway there. Uh, the There are a couple pictures that maybe they're going to put up on the screen that show that. Uh, and what you'll see is new finishes, new uh, carpeting, new paint. Uh, now, when we say light and bright, I did have a few folks who said it's really light and bright and too bright. And I've said it a number of times, but worth repeating, uh, the lighting that was in place initially is not the end state, meaning uh, it will be dimmed. But until the full system is connected, it doesn't allow you to dim that lighting. How soon do you think that will uh, be? I believe within a week or so. Oh, right, they're, they're very close now mm -hmm. to completing the, the Lutron system. Mm -hmm. and and that system will also be connected to our building controls. And so much like heating and cooling and other lighting, it allows you to schedule that so that in the evenings it can be dimmed, maybe at the most dark time you're gonna dim it even more. Still you want safe egress in the hallways, uh, but it, it's remotely and then we can also uh, you know, structure that like we do many of our other systems through building control. So really now an enhancement. Lynn, will that be the, you indicated that it was really quite bright now. Are you permanently going to um, dim it somewhat? Yes, okay. yes, that is the intent. I did have a few folks who said uh, that it reminded of them of runway lighting, and that was not the intent. Right. So or Channel 6 lighting. Correct, <laughs> right. yes, those right. are a little bit bright. So right. um, that's not what we want, uh, and so rest assured that will um, be taken care of. Okay, good. So yesterday, I know security was at the resident council general session kind of talking about a day in the, the life of a security officer. So if you have the opportunity to view that session again when it's rebroadcast, uh, great information to be shared. And I think perhaps a bit eye-opening uh, of all that they are responsible for and accomplish, um, much of it unexpected. Uh, also, when we were talking about uh, at um, one of our area meetings, we were talking about uh, the work, the work orders, and a lot of the calls that come into our office. And even a few of my uh, colleagues were shocked by the the volume of phone calls. So, uh, on average, the general services coordinators, Beverly Stouts and her team, uh, they average right around 650 calls a week. A week. And that's just a, a little piece of uh, their job, but. It's information and referral. They do a great job. So, just know. Yes, uh, they do. But that that's a a lot of uh, a lot of talking and a lot of calls that yes, come in. Indeed. More than a hundred a day, then. Absolutely. On average. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, another uh, topic I thought I, I would share. Uh, you know, on occasion we have leaks that are not 
sprinkler pipe related. They may be a toilet overflow or sink overflow. And so the question uh, was raised recently by some residents in discussion that said, gosh, why don't we have overflows? And that term overflow on your sink. So if you think about your bathroom sink, you know, there's usually a little hole that you notice. And that overflow allows, if water fills up to the top, it begins draining into that overflow. Unfortunately, if you've got the water running, that little overflow will take some of it, but it's not going to mm -hmm. preclude mm -hmm. the sink from overflowing onto the floor. And so folks thought maybe there was something we didn't have. And while our sinks have overflows, they're not designed to capture enough of the water so we just remind folks, if you've got your water running, I do this you know, at home too, you get focused and then you forget. Stay with your sink if your water's running, otherwise turn it off. Uh, your neighbors will thank you. <laughs> Gosh, Lynn, that was <laughs> Yes, I don't want to say that should seem obvious, but I. Well, oh, uh, but you know, we sometimes the phone doesn't. rings or somebody comes to the door, and then and that people leave their mm -hmm. their faucets running full blast. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. Gracious, happens to me at home. Mm -hmm. Too many things, uh, yeah, too right. many irons in the well, fire. It's certainly true that we we don't multitask as well as we used to. Well, um, I, I'm right there with you, Sam. So just a, a good reminder. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a couple things coming up. We've talked for a, a good amount of time about the Village Square Elevator, and I mm -hmm. assure you that within the next uh, week or so we'll have more detailed schedule. Uh, the contract has been awarded, permits, uh, and legal work all done, so mm -hmm. they will be doing a uh, pre launch meeting with the vendor and we'll have much more detail to be sharing with residents. Um, in in terms of time schedule? Yes, in terms of time schedule and uh, based on everything thus far, we're looking at uh, elevator being functional by before the end of summer. So oh, exciting that, times. Oh, that quickly. Mm -hmm. Yes, Good. now that's an area that's probably going to be a little more difficult for folks to see, so we'll probably be sharing some uh, photos to show the progress as that. Now will that actually be in the, where the porch now is? It, uh -huh. it is within that footprint, yes. Uh -huh. All yes. right, so we won't be able to see it. That's, that's you, you won't be able to see it. Maybe out that one window. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. if you're close enough, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll probably have some pictures so you get a better sense of it. Well, that's a very exciting it thing. It is. N not that we haven't needed it or anything of that no, sort. No, no. So, um, some other things folks may have noticed around campus are the new signs in front of the clubhouses. Yes. Now those of you who have lived here for a while, you may say, well, of course I know where those are, but if you think about someone arriving to the community, it's pretty overwhelming. You get well, to that first all stop sign. For years that mm -hmm. we needed those, so we're delighted to see yes. them. So, uh, I mean, you get a taxi, for example, and the, mm -hmm. or, or your friends and say. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So look for those Good. continued improvements. Well, those are, those are terrific. It, it just seems amazing that it's taken 20 years to get them. Um, so, no, we're all very pleased about those signs. Go ahead. Um, you know, another reminder as we have more people coming on and off campus and, and so much going on, just a reminder about parking. Uh, I would love uh, for security to be able to focus more of their time. That can be a challenge, but we do ask you to report to security if you observe folks parking where they shouldn't be. Obviously, if they're in your space, you're going yes. to let us know. Uh, but we continue to work to educate and enforce parking, but we do ask for everyone's assistance mm -hmm. in reporting that so we can address it. Mm -hmm. Well, I see our time is about up. Um, is there anything pressing that you would like to finish with? I, I think uh, there are a lot of projects going on, so if you're so inclined, yes, indeed. go, you know, uh, take a tour of the campus and uh, those retired engineers may enjoy themselves more than others. But Lynn, do you, does General Services oversee the construction, for example, of, of the uh, new Garden Ridge? So we don't extension? oversee that. We do, um, we liaise with them in part because uh, they're in our space and we have projects going on, so uh, we are in communication. It's actually, there are two general contractors and uh, we have third party project managers who liaise between oh, them, right. us, and our, our corporate partners. Right. But, but we are well aware of what's going on so that we mm -hmm. can, you know, we're not bumping into each other. Yes. So All lots right. of communication about lots of moving parts. That, that certainly makes sense. Well, Lynn, this is very helpful today, as always. Um, 
General Services, I, I think, is so highly regarded here. So we, we thank you for everything you're doing here. Well, thank you. We strive to uh, be a great partner. Yes, you so do. Thank you for having me. We'll see you next time. Absolutely. We'll stop now and have a roll in. Hello, Greenspring. My name is Kelly Lukeshander, and we are going to be diving into some secrets around Greenspring. This is Greenspring Investigates. It's me again. I've been seeing these yellow ribbons all over campus on people's badges, and I'm going to get to the bottom of this and see what these are all about. Let's find out more. to tell me the meaning of this ribbon. Oh, this scholarship? Yeah. I support the scholarships um, that I donate to every year. And what, what does that do? Why, do you, why do you do that? Why do you give money to the servers? Because it's to help the servers in their college education, oh. and it's for increasing the value of their education. That's awesome. Well, thank you for letting me know. Oh, you're welcome. I support the scholarship fund. What's the scholarship fund? What, what's that all about? That's because our waiters and waitresses, uh, our young people, yeah. they're in high school, and we provide a scholarship fund so they can go to college. And that means you donate it? I donate it, yes. Everybody that has a yellow ribbon, donate it. Awesome. Thanks, John. You. I know you'll know this. Why are people wearing these ribbons? Why do you have that ribbon on? You don't know that yet? No. Oh, well, we get them because we've made a contribution to the scholarship fund. And what's that? What? All of our servers that are seniors yeah. can apply if they put in so many hours and they've worked and they have a good working relationship and everything else, and they're going to college. Uh -huh. And so if they what, get what? the scholarship, yeah. they get $10,000 for their four years of college. That's amazing. And so I support the scholars. And the main reason I do is I was a teacher for a long time. So number one on my list. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Mary Sue. I knew you'd have the answers. You're welcome, Kelly. Molly, what are these? You have to tell me. What are these? What are they? For the scholars fund. Oh. And there you have it, Greenspring. Another case closed. This time, it was the ribbons for the Green Spring Scholars Fund. So we found out that those yellow ribbons mean that you have donated to the Scholars Fund. And the Scholars Fund is a fund that gives college scholarships to our high school senior dining staff. So to get yourself a ribbon, make sure to donate to the Scholars Fund today. To make a donation, you can write a check out to Green Spring Village and in the memo line, write Scholars Fund, or you can have something taken from your monthly statements. To get a copy of that form, just go to the philanthropy office. So for now, the case is closed. Until the next mystery comes around, Green Spring, this is Kelly Lukeshander signing off. Welcome back. In this half of Village in Motion, I'm just so pleased to be able to introduce Donna Epps, who probably doesn't need much introduction, our resident life director. Donna, we're always glad to have you have you come and give us updates on what's going on in resident life, since that's such an important aspect of, of Green Spring residents. Yes, it is, absolutely. And always glad to join you. Well, what what would you like to, to be focused on this morning? Well, today I'm gonna to talk a little bit more about our ancillary services. We do have some updates um, about what is going on in our home support and home health services. Mm -hmm. And then I'll end today talking about still some, some questions that we're um, getting about the hospice program that, as you know, um, ceased back in February. Mm -hmm. But with respect to our 
home support services, I think a few months ago I talked about that we were going through a re-engineering and what that would mean for the residents is that we can provide even more consistent assignments. Um, what that entails is we'll have staff that will work defined shifts similar to how they work in um, Garden Ridge currently. Mm -hmm. So we'll have pretty much three shifts of staff and they will you know work their full um, either so seven to three three to one right exactly our ships seven. may be a little bit different to meet the needs of our residents so that process is is going on right now and so all of our Donna, mm -hmm. one thing let me interrupt and I apologize for doing no, that that's but good. I I keep hearing from residents that there's they're sometimes unable to get uh, home health and or home support, home support primarily um, in the mornings. Right, the mornings are our busiest time mm -hmm. and so we have been able to more, more recently accommodate um, more, more residents. But with the new um, schedules that will start um, um, because of the re-engineering uh, project that's going on, we're really focused on hiring more staff that can accommodate those morning shifts mm -hmm. because um, prior to re-engineering, re many of our staff were PRN or flex staff with re-engineering will have more full-time and part-time staff mm -hmm. with set schedules mm -hmm. and so that All will right. help with that quite right. a bit. Is that still a bit of a, a, a bit of an issue at this point the morning? Um, we we have been able to you know do some creative scheduling mm -hmm. um, and our staff have been great in terms of being, being flexible mm -hmm. and so we have some short-term measures in place to help with that, but we will really see a difference um, after mid-May when those new schedules ah, start. All right, thank right. you. And, and also, um, I want to thank the Green Spring community for um, really um, seeing the benefit of using our, our services. So we've also gotten a lot more requests for home support services. So that's a good thing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and then um, people still get home support services and certified home health services confused. So I'm, I'm here to hopefully provide some more clarification for that as well. With home support, that is basically Green Springs private duty agency where we do offer nursing and um, home support aid, aid services, both direct care as well as companion care. But the home support services or the private duty services are paid for by the resident. But if you have long-term care insurance, um, depending upon your policy provisions, um, oftentimes you can get reimbursed for those services through your long-term care insurance carrier and our office coordinator will assist residents with the information that they need to get those services reimbursed. So it's primarily aid, it's primarily AIDS. Primarily AIDS, but we offer nursing services as well. Um, when we get a request for service or a referral for service, it starts by sending a registered nurse to the resident's home and the nurse will do an assessment, mm -hmm. talk to the resident and determine what level of assistance is needed and how frequently and what times those services are requested. Some Donna, of, give mm -hmm. me an example of a kind of situation where an, an RN would be required um, under home support. Well, we had we offer um, nursing services in terms of the um, initial assessment, but we also provide wound care, catheter care, All right. services that are no longer covered by other insurance. I just assumed that was under home health, but uh, but they could be also under home support. Yes, uh -huh. absolutely. And is home support other than long-term care uh, insurance? 
would normally be covered by the by the patient yes. patient reimbursement, yes. not Medicare or what? Yes, mm -hmm. okay, absolutely. And then moving on into certified home health, mm -hmm. and that's a good way to um, make the distinction because certified home health for us means that this is a Medicare uh, certified agency that provides services that are 100 percent paid by Medicare for medically necessary services that are short-term or intermittent in nature that require a physician's order to receive those services and all of our nursing services are provided by RNs. And actually, if you think about it in home support, while we do have nurses, we have most of our services are provided by aides, whereas in certified home health, while we do have um, a home health aide, most of those services are provided by a nurse. And for us right now, all of our services are provided by registered nurses, but also by physical therapists, mm -hmm. occupational therapists, and speech therapists, mm -hmm. whereas those services, the therapy services, are not covered under home support or not provided through mm -hmm. home support. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I think that's a very important distinction. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the services provided by certified home health include blood glucose monitoring, medication management. We also start each um, visit with a um, assessment and of course we do periodic assessments throughout the course of someone's um, uh, stay within um, home health. Um, we can also care for new or unstable medical conditions. Uh, for uh -huh. example, if you have coronary heart failure or if you are a diabetic mm -hmm. and you begin to have some, some issues where there is a worsening of those conditions and your physician feels like you need a little bit more oversight in, in your home, we can get a referral for uh, certified home health services that way as well. Now, are you suggesting then, however, that, that there is a time limitation? Um, sort of built into certified home health services? It, it, it really all depends upon your particular condition. Could they be long term? If, if it's going to be a more long term condition, um, in, in order to um, continue with certified home health, you have to meet the criteria for home health. Okay. And so after your initial period, period of care is over, you can um, um, go through a recertification process right. because we still have have to certify that you continue to need those services. All right, I'm just I, I'm I'm assuming then that if you can be recertified, that that could be a fairly lengthy. Um, it's not going to be too I mean, long. We're not talking about five years or anything. Oh no, okay. absolutely not. I just had no idea what the time right. limitation was. Be because certified oh. home health services are more for acute conditions right. that right. you expect to get mm -hmm. better or to improve mm -hmm. in a shorter period of time. Mm -hmm. And then if you need longer term care that's no longer covered by um, home health um, Medicare reimbursement, you can get those services through home support services or at that point in time through your primary care physician or another specialist. Or moving or transitioning to Garden Ridge. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Exactly. And so we do do a, a lot in um, certified home health. Um, we also do um, wound care, um, catheter care, tube feeding, and the important thing is that we, we coordinate with all of your other uh, services and, and practitioners on and off campus. So if you have a primary ah. care f physician um, who is not part of the medical center, mm -hmm. um, we do coordinate your care with your primary care right. physician outside of the community as, as well. Thing to say. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, um, we ha have constant contact with um, the medical center um, physicians. Mm -hmm. We also coordinate as, as appropriate with the resident services um, um, coordinators who are our, our, our um, independent living social workers mm -hmm. as well as with the medical center social worker as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, okay. and that's 
important for people to understand um, because it's making sure that you have all of the resources that you need and that we make all of those contact points so that we are providing um, comprehensive care that meets mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. of your needs within the community. Mm -hmm. Donna, I see our time is very limited. And Already? I know you want to talk about hospice a little bit. Yes, I do. Um, while our, our hospice program did close as of February 11th of this year, I continue to get questions. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most frequent questions is, do I have to leave Greenspring or transition to Garden Ridge in order to receive hospice? And their answer is no. Um, your physician will, of course, um, help you determine um, at, at what point you may want to consider hospice and whether you are in your independent living apartment or whether you are in Garden Ridge, our staff will help you to make contact with the hospice provider of your choice. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, if you have a, a diagnosis that meets hospice criteria and that is a choice that you are now making, your independent living resident services coordinator can help you to make now that that's the contact new name for social work yes okay. absolutely and so they have the information in their offices okay. of our local hospice providers oh they do yes right. and they will come on campus and do the same kind of, of assessments that our um, hospice nurses did when we um, actually had our own hospice agency All right. and, and it doesn't mean that you have to transition to Garden Ridge. Every um, situation is treated on a very um, individual basis mm -hmm. but if you um, happen to you know, already live in on Garden Ridge, the same thing, the social workers and the team there will, will help to identify the hospice provider that's right for you because you still have a choice and those providers do come on campus and provide the care here on campus. All right, I think we wouldn't have thought about the social workers providing that, so mm -hmm. that's extremely helpful for us to know. Um, they're, they're telling us we're, we're our time is up, okay. so we'll, we'll need to, to, to stop. Donna, this was very helpful this morning. Thank you so much You're for, welcome. for the information. It really, it really was. Any, any words of wisdom you want to leave us with, or shall we stop? Just, just always thank you so much for providing the opportunity to let the residents know how they can access their services and what is available to them here on campus, because that's, that's important. All right, and you are down in the basement I shouldn't put it that way, of uh, Forest View. We are on the terrace level of uh, the Forest terrace, View. Thank yes, you. We I couldn't are. think of the level. In the resident life right. office, yes. Uh -huh. All right, good. Um, no, I couldn't remember whether it was ground or terrace. That's so okay. That's, uh, it's terrace level. We'll stop now and have some announcements. Welcome back.
I'm delighted to introduce our third guest of the day. We don't normally have, have th three guests, but this is a very special sort of guest. This is Gwen Lockhart, who is in charge of the sales, the ticket sales for the Green Spring Players. Mm -hmm. And you are going to tell us, uh, you're gonna give us an update on the ticket sales for the upcoming play, and tell us the name of the play and the dates. Okay, uh, the name of the play is Everybody Loves Opal. The play, I, I know, I've read the script, uh, th three people spend the entire time trying to kill this poor little woman who runs, a junk or she lives next to the junkyard and that's how she makes her living, picking up junk. It will be terribly funny, I think. Yes, it's a uh, very, it's a very clever play. Wonderful um, feedback. Um, the and, and how are the sales going? Well, we've only been out there one day, so I don't have a count, but um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the order, order forms, forms, the uh -huh. order forms went in the uh -huh. cubby Saturday night and Sunday morning, mm -hmm. and ticket sales actually launched yesterday, Monday the 23rd, and I understand that, as usual, our box was really full of order forms, so mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a load. Mm -hmm. um, the ticket team is excited. I mean, they're, they've been ready to go here and now they're finally underway. I want to mention their names just to recognize them, if I may. Mm -hmm. Eileen Long is in Hunter's Crossing and in charge of the Hunter's Crossing sales, obviously our largest community. Mm -hmm. And Jane Hoover is in charge of our ticket sales in Town Center. Mm -hmm. And Marie Bailello is in charge of ticket sales in Village Square. Mm -hmm. uh, all three are really eager to go and happily everything was launched yesterday. We have... Now, now Gwen, I think normally you sell out at least two or three of the performances. Yeah. There um, are three evening, well actually four if you count the... Uh, the rehearsal. The rehearsal, uh-huh. Uh, there are the three evening performances and yes, we do sell out Wednesday and we have started selling out another night, usually a second performance. We do not have a single performance that you wouldn't term a full house. Uh, it's pretty close to full every single yes, performance. Yes, yes, absolutely, and absolutely uh, full, often like Friday night and, yeah. um, and then the Saturday matinee. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. increasingly on Saturday matinee, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, People's families, I think, often. Yes. Uh, we have decided this year, and the board sanctioned it, to give it a try to set up a table outside Jefferson Restaurant this Sunday during the Sunday brunch from oh. 11 to 1.30, mm -hmm. and we will be selling tickets on a cash and carry basis. We do need to keep a paper trail, so we will be recording names number of tickets uh -huh. and, and the night. So but should people bring their order forms? They, they should, or they can bring this order form. This is going in the cubbies tonight, and mm -hmm. we'll be in their cubby tomorrow morning mm -hmm. announcing the special cash and carry opportunity to buy tickets. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had people request this. It'd be so much easier if we could just give you $5 and get a ticket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to achieve. Um, I don't think we really need to drive to increase sales, but I make think it more it's, convenient. I think it may, we're making it sure. more convenient sure. and we're increasing awareness in, among families. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We'd like to see more families say, Mom, would I, would you, could I go with you or something like that? Sure. We just think it would be very stimulating. Mm -hmm. And let's see, uh, we do have one thing we need to mention. Um, in addition, I have two things. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cover the dress rehearsal. This year, the board decided that uh, they would go ahead and charge for the dress rehearsal. And that's uh, Monday night. That's Monday night, the 14th, May 14th. Mm -hmm. And a check or $5, we will give you a playbill, and the playbill will be the ticket to go in the doorway and be seated. So it's, it's uh, it cash at the door. Yes, uh -huh. cash at the door. Um, and then the other single thing I wanted to mention, and we're concerned because our response has not been good. On the order form, it asks if you need a handicap space. People are used to that line. Yes. But there's a second line. Please check here if you have a rollator or walker that needs to be stored. 
we need to know number, like one walker, one, mm -hmm. two walkers, however. Yes, that, that has never it's, been asked before. It is uh -huh. important because mm -hmm. it's, it's not our bright idea. The fire marshal requires this, ah. and it is for our safety. I mean, mm -hmm. you have a full house in there. We mm -hmm. cannot evacuate that room with great ease, no. with no, a lot of walkers true. to stumble mm -hmm. over. Um, so we do have to pay attention mm -hmm. to what he says. Mm -hmm. And if you could give us this information, it really facilitates the capability of the ushers to store yes. the, take the mm -hmm. walker, give you a receipt, take it and store it, and then afterwards bring All it back. All right, well that's, it's good to I know the reason I encourage people to this. please, please fill out that line because mm -hmm. it's All very right. important. And that's new. That is new. Gwen, this is very helpful. Um, I think our, they're, they're telling us to get our time. Oh. We, we, we need to stop. Um, is there anything, I think you've covered, covered it all? I think I have, yes. Um, I'm just, I'm very excited about our sales this year. I'm excited about the play. It well, is such a fun play. It, it is really a fun, fun play, and, and you, uh, you, you and your ushers do a wonderful job. And everybody be looking for this yellow form, because you may want to buy a cash and carry ticket on Sunday yeah, outside a, the brunch area. That's a great idea to be able to uh, well, do that. We'll try it. And if it flies, mm -hmm. great. If it doesn't, mm -hmm. we won't do it a second time. <laughs> All right. Well, Gwen, thanks so much for coming in today. I'm going to ask you to read the teas in a minute. Oh. So don't go away. Let's, let's have some announcements. Read the what? Feature programming. Sorry, let me get the right glasses on here. The feature programming <coughs> is Coffee with the Execs, and that's at 2 and 8. The uh, Village Church is tonight at 5 and 9. Wednesday on Village in Motion is the special trips, the volunteer programs, and the brain tease answer. And here is the brain tease, if you will read it. Ah, what can you break without breaking it? answer will be revealed tomorrow. What can you break without breaking it? Hmm, that's, a, that's uh, an that's interesting That's a good one. one. Okay. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you soon.